You are part National Lockdown. 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 Episode 24! Yep, here we go, here we go! I feel slightly underprepared, but here we go. Samesies! <laughs> we, that means we've done 24 weeks of absolutely internet. Yeah, I know, man. It's, yeah. <laughs> I Fucking couldn't believe it last week when we were saying we finally got to 23, but 24. And there doesn't seem to be any still any light at the end of the tunnel other than schools might open on March the 8th and we'll still be in lockdown. We'll still be in lockdown but I mean honestly I almost can't remember what it was like before and oh you messaged me New Zealand looks like it's having Yeah. after we jinxed it didn't we? <laughs> yeah. We sorry Spen, Ed, everyone out there. Sorry boys. <laughs> really sorry about that one that's, uh, that's our fault 100%. Yeah do apologise. Poor yeah. Poor Wynn as well. Have you seen Wynn, Wynn posted something earlier? I mean, this is ridiculous talking about people's Insta stories, but Wynn posted a uh, video of his bike entirely clogged up with mud <laughs> to the point where he's carrying it. And you just think, poor fuckers, looking at all his all his friends back home, just <laughs> loving life. Yeah, just doing bike park laps and he's just carrying a bike around. <laughs> Welcome to England, dude. That English winter will come up and grab you. I felt the same Bloody yesterday. Were, I did the shortest ride ever yesterday. Did you? Yeah, I rode from, you know, I texted you and I was like, I'm going for a ride. And I, yeah, thought, yeah, I don't yeah. know why, it's minus four. So I rode from my house up to the woods. There's like a few really sort of rubbish runs, to be honest, like a few little yeah. trails. I rode one of them. I was like, nah, I'm not over it. Just rode home. <laughs> like, I was out for the grand sum of 15 out. minutes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's still, you're getting out. It's good. It's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm stoked you're you're on a bike. Because it, you'll just, it'll just, you'll, Grow your rides and you'll get better. Anyway, yeah. it's not going to be this cold for that long anyway. Nah, I mean, it's fine today even. It's nine degrees apparently right now. I don't know if it is nine, but it feels like it. Yeah, that's it's how nice I, That's outside. how I gauge temperature, dude. I just say, it feels like it. Yeah. So, so. I, um, I got I, I got a message um, today on my phone. Mm. And, it, and this is a gauge of my recovery. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to let you in on something. During my sofa time, my phone screen time... I was monitoring it seven hours, Good 30 God. minutes in a day. Dude. Yeah. That's How insane is that? What do you that? feel like you achieved from that seven hours? What did you achieve? Like, what, what is the, is there a benefit at all? No, nothing, dude. I'm, I'm, well, well, I mean, of that time, some of it's emails, some of it's watching documentaries on my phone, some of it's fucking, you, you know, that, WhatsApp then? in my, fr- yeah, some, yeah, to be yeah. honest, yeah. Okay. Especially when you've got when I got got a broken ankle, I'm in the hospital and stuff. I'm like just leg up, yeah, doing nothing, okay. you know. So yeah, yeah. But it's down to four hours now, which is still embarrassingly high. Normally I'm two hours forty, but we talked about screen time before, and it was like a current thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like so, so when I'm happy, I'm at two yep. hours forty. You know what I mean? That's my that's my target. Okay, that's good. That, I, think that's gonna be, I think you're going to be like below that pretty soon. Yeah. I think you're so. gonna be out riding as soon as you can, and you're just exactly, gonna be like, yeah. yeah, you're gonna do like one insta photo, which will take thirty seconds, exactly, yeah, straight back on. Oh, and mate. it does tally up a lot of other stuff. It's like I was looking at it the other day, uh, and I'd, I'd had a day where it was an hour, an hour more than what it usually is. But yeah. that hour, my phone was lit up because I was on a meditation app. So I was yeah, like, there you yeah, go. It's yeah. not so bad, you know. That's cool. I'm happy with that. If my if it's five hours and one hour of it's meditating, then it's cool. Yeah, ultimately, who really cares? Just if you can squash it. Because I, I definitely don't think... I, I mean, it's not exactly... I'm not saying anything surprising when I say I don't think it largely makes you feel good. No. Surfing the web, going on social media the entire time. I mean, mine's yeah. largely just riding, but then equally, when I can't ride, then that's just like it's literally apps made to make me want to go riding. <laughs> yeah, Totally. <laughs> totally I had a this email sort of thing that I signed up to um, came through the other day and it, it, it said something along the lines of the Instagram algorithm is smarter than the algorithm that scientists made to beat a human at chess yeah 
Crazy, but actually, huh? yeah. So, yeah, and then at the bottom it said basically you have no chance of beating it. Like you will always succumb to that Instagram thing, which is really annoying. But also, like when you think about it, it's yeah. Hey, can we do live on air? Because I think this will be funny. Yeah. I actually, I actually don't know. Right, so live on air, you have to go on your Instagram and yeah. you have to click on the the search button, so it takes you to what's called the explore page, and it will show you. This I think is a window into the algorithm. So you go on, on, oh yeah, you go on the little uh, magnifying glass. And then it's just got a a load of suggested stuff, right? Yeah, okay. So this will show you, (laughs) you know, I'll tell you what, if you, so this, you can see exactly what I, what I look at from this. It'll be better though when you, when we're actually, have uploaded it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? So this has got biking, it's got old cars, it's got surfing, it's got moto, there's Ken... Rocks and yeah, let's yeah. see yours. I, I'm really hoping it's shitloads <laughs> of fitness models. <laughs> All right, so it's uh, this is just the first bit. There you go. Can okay, you see anything? it's got a, I don't know what that is. A lot of biking, like... dude. You're a bike fan, huh? Moto, yeah, biking, yeah, yeah, yeah just bite some teeth, mate. You, you are a keeper, Davey. Yeah, you are a keeper. I'm a lifer, there, huh? Real lifer. That's good. That is uh, that's um, cool. My personal one won't look so good. That'll be. Oh, you one. sly dog! You sly yeah. dog! You just. Oh honey, man, the personal one's embarrassing me. as hell. <laughs> <laughs> is it skin the tone? Skin tone the whole way down. Literally just fitness models, all guys. <laughs> all guys! <laughs> Didn't see that coming. There you go. All guys. There you go. Oh, and you've got a phone number on called. screen. There you go. Dad, right. I'm just doing a podcast, dude. Is that okay? Do you, Dad, if you, do you want to say something to the listeners? You can say anything you want. No, I was just going to bring you some money through, that's all. But I'll see you soon. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. <laughs> right. Dropping off there the cash. There you go, there you go ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's how it goes. <laughs> just hang up on him. Oh, oh. you want to drop me money? Yeah, sure. Boo! Oh, cool, man. We'll get it later. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so George was telling me this thing that she'd seen. Um, it was... Fuck, I can't remember exactly it, but the the chick had made some card, and, and it opened up, and, I mean, she sounds like a chicken head, this girl, but she had printed off little faces of different girls that he had liked on Instagram, <laughs> and then made some comment about them being better than her or something. <laughs> Something yeah, like I thought, it, thought she'd made like a Valentine's card for him. That would have been quite nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was something wow. about him choosing her over all these ones that he's liked on Instagram. And but then it just made me think, well, she's looking through what he likes on Instagram. That's yeah. That's you ever been cool. one of those looking th- looking through? No, no, I don't think I have. I don't think I have. Although there's a quite a dark story about this. If you really want it, <laughs> please. <laughs> Uh, so, oh man, are we sure? Yeah, why not? So, <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it now, he's going to look like a dickhead, but my my ex was, yeah. was cheating on me, and I knew, so I just had to keep looking at her phone and been like trying to figure it out. Oh, you poor <laughs> and fucker, I, and she that was, sucks, and she, and she was, she was, so <laughs> I figured it out. Oh, you poor fucker. That, yeah, yeah, well, proud be- of that better one, off but... without her, better off without her. Yeah, exactly. I, I had a, with my, uh, with my ex, I had a shared <laughs> iPad. And like, the, like she had like dude friends, which I know is possible, but I'm a little bit sceptical about the guy friends thing. I don't know. I only see it from my angle. And let yeah. me tell you, I don't go for coffees with lots of girls. No. Just saying. Just saying, dude. I feel you. I feel I, you. I feel you like. know what I mean? Like, when I'm single, if I'm asking you for coffee, I've got ulterior motives. I'm just 100%. saying. And maybe our listeners would think differently. And I'm sure there's an endless number of different ways you can be friends with girls. I don't want to sound like a yeah, bad guy. I, think, anyway, I know what you mean, though. Anyway, and I, I always just I just used to be... I've never been weird about it, but I'd be like to a... You know, like, you know he wants to get with you, right? Like, that's why he's messaging you. And then we had this shared iPad, and then he like... He like... um he I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was just so revealing. It was just him basically saying... I love you. <laughs> you know? Oh, wow. And, but and you I was could on see the, it as well. I was on the iPad probably playing a moto game or something <laughs> as dumb as you could do on an iPad. And yeah. that came through, I was just like... 
Just playing mad hate, skills. Hate to say I told you so, but... Oh, man. Mm. And she's an ex, so maybe it yeah, worked. There you go. Did it work? Out of there. Didn't work. Mm. Tough. <laughs> and now, yeah, uh... now life is good, and I hope life is good for you as well. Oh, it's exceptional, to be Excellent. honest. Yeah, Excellent. When you look back at that, it's kind of a dark time of my life, for sure. It was, it Nuts, isn't it? Looking back on previous yeah. times. There's a reason that people are exes, and I always think yeah. that when people are oh, I'm going to meet my ex for a coffee you're like no no you just delete them and you just you just move on dude some of the nicest feel like. feelings some of the some of the some of the times where i feel like i know myself the most in my life when i look back on it are after i've got out of a relationship and then i've realized yeah. i'm the shit again you know was, like not, i'm not talking about getting with other girls or anything like that just realizing like fuck me the world is my oyster i can literally do whatever i want and i can be happy on my own with yeah. myself well, that sounds like wanking. I'm not talking about that. A bit. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, some of those things, just like, you know, just leaving the country whenever I want, doing whatever I want, mm. straight after a bad relationship. I hope a lot mm. of people have realised that in lockdown too, because obviously yeah. dating has not been easy. And I've got mm. a lot of friends that are, I say a lot, I've got a few friends that are single. And you just feel like, oh, this must be rough, you know. Yeah, definitely, trying to, yeah. Trying to go out and do something meet people when you shouldn't be it's tough really Real difficult tough. really yeah. really difficult yeah very lucky to have someone to just rant on at yeah exactly exactly poor thing so um so yeah what, what, i mean dude we've got <laughs> we got some listener questions to do today i think yes. that's what one thing we should definitely get into in a bit um because we've missed them for the last two episodes and i always feel super bad when people have yeah. taken a few minutes out of the day to, to write a question and we just don't even do it so we're going to do some listener questions um there's been loads of stuff going on though um i'm trying to think so the first thing i want to talk about those in fact this is quite funny actually talking about instagram their their focus have just signed those four french guys the four yeah the frenchies yeah okay so when i saw it I'll, I'll be honest i'd never heard of the guys you know i didn't i didn't know them or anything like that so i thought oh, i'll have a little bit of a deep dive down the old instagram and see what's going on yeah yeah and one of them dude i don't know if you've seen this or not so Leo Jagel, I think, or I mean, yeah, I've got his name wrong. He's French. Jagel, Jagel, <laughs> I don't know. To me, You're right, in a northern maybe. accent, that says Jagel. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. All right. So his Instagram uh, is Leo Jagel. And yeah. he's put, I don't know if you've seen this, there's a video on there of him riding a moto trials bike through some dirt jumps. And it is sick. It's so good. I haven't actually seen that, no. I right, haven't. good. Yeah, it's right, good. And he was like the first guy out of that 404 thing that I clicked on, and I was like, I'm sold. I love these guys. They're like the French, almost like a 50 to 1 kind of yeah, vibe. Yeah, it is, going isn't on. it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, I think they're great fun. We have our like focus, um, our focus like team meeting. We have, normally we have it in real life, but obviously during the pandemic, that's not possible. So we have these big Zoom meetings. Yeah. And just the bunch of characters we got like, like having the Frenchies on board is so sick. Like they fit straight in instantly, and you can gauge. I think even though it is like an online weird conversation, yeah, you can gauge. Like they just get the tone. They love riding. That's ultimately, I feel like, what Focus does really well. Puts yeah, across definitely. Really well. I think about this sounding like so much of an ad. <laughs> no, but it's true though, man. I mean, again, it's it's interesting because um, I think a lot of people, maybe our UK listeners, won't have heard of these guys, and I don't know yeah. if they're huge in France or I don't know what that deal is. But, you know, you, you discover these people and, you, you know, instantly, like for me, you look on the Instagram, you're like, yeah, they fit. Like, that's the perfect yeah. Yeah, guy it's to rad join as well, the focus, isn't it? like, family thing. So, but yeah, I, I honestly do. There's two parts of his little, like, trials riding through dirt jumps. It is fucking sick. It's so cool. Rad. So, yeah. So, there's, there's four of them. So, we wanted to do, just do a bit of a, a shout out to those guys. Cause Hell yeah. Like gonna, gonna and Focus it. are doing another thing that I think we should get our listeners involved in. Oh, yeah. Aren't they? Let me, let me get it up so I've, so I've got it. Fresh I honestly think mind. this is arguably one is the one of the coolest things for a, for a few reasons. So before we get into it, it's funny to wind back and I remember us talking about how you know for you as an athlete how much of an honour and stuff it is to be in like a cut media ad, yeah, yeah, or yeah. a cut media edit. So this is literally giving anyone the opportunity to be in a cut media edit, which is insane. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, and just cool. it's like the prop. It's like proper in it like it everyone's got a clip that they whether it's like a victory or a failure everyone's got a clip that springs to mind in their 
photo yeah. album or whatever yeah you can just send that in and and uh feature do for sure for sure so so do you want to explain the premise or do you think you've just almost let me because i've got it up on screen now so it's called share share your moments and uh we want this is the i'm going to literally read from the website because i think it's i think it's a cool idea so i don't feel bad mm. about reading we want you we want your face your story your downs and ups as we made the experience of getting us getting lost ourselves we realized that you always reach downs and ups you always go from low times to high times. And that's why we ask you to share your videos and pictures with us to create a shared video. So yeah, the idea is that you collect a moment, you submit it and join the premiere. So there's a website where you drop files in there and basically you'll have the chance. Really, you've just got to look at the sample video they've put up for this to really make sense i feel like because yeah, it's yeah. it can be pictures from anything as the oh they've included me breaking my ankle obviously a low but they <laughs> but there's like pictures there's like videos from going through massive puddles eating a bacon sandwich in the freezing cold everything that makes mountain biking mountain biking so i think That's it's a rad. a rad idea isn't it i think it's a, honestly uh, yeah i think it's a super sick idea when i saw it come up come up on the instagram thing the other day about the making a movie i was like that's yeah. so cool. Again, it reminded me a little bit of the YouTube thing they've just done uh, called like Year Day. Oh, fucking hell, I don't know. Yeah, it's called like a day or something. I can't remember. But loads of people submitted clips and stuff. So yeah, hyped. And um, I'm looking forward to people getting involved. Like it'd be so sick to see some listeners get you know get a little peek on there and stuff. So isn't it funny? It's like I almost find myself. I'm almost. I almost feel like I'm like a marketing fan sometimes. Like, just the concept of an Dude, ad, word. if it's really that cool and I feel like it reflects biking well, then I'm, yeah. I'm on board with it regardless of whether the riding's whack or whether the, the even the product's whack. I just like good ideas. Totally. I, I don't know you, if that's just from working in the industry or but it, whatever. But it just freshens things up a little bit. I feel like for mm. a long time it has kind of been quite stale. And one thing that yeah. I think lockdown has done for for our industry is it has spiced things up a little bit because you've had all these marketing companies and brands have had to go right okay how do we market like what what does it look like okay we can't share loads of people out riding together we could be or you sort of can but you can't right there's definitely some gray areas with it yeah so you know there's not many races going on and it's it's interesting to watch what brands have like flourished the same as it's been interesting watching what athletes have flourished yeah yeah indeed I like Sorry. like, and you can do that through any sport. You just like, mm. like that's what half of watching YouTube videos is for me as well. Which is, sounds really boring, but you kind of watch them thinking, like as a as a rider, you kind of apply the same, whatever whatever formula they're using, you apply it to yourself, and you kind of think, oh yeah, I could do that. Oh yeah, I could do that. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love like, like you, that. You, you enjoyed that that video that I shared with you the other day. Oh the, mate, the so sick. I, oh so sick. Yeah. Yeah. The whole just like. I tell you what we could do with a bit it. of that right now, and I shared that straight away with uh, Andy at Cart. I, I was just like, "Really, oh, fucking please, just actually get across what." Well, I, I guess mountain biking is different for everyone, but yeah, yeah, they're they're right, right, okay, and that's interesting because, and I think, I feel like with you, it, it has mainly been the same thing. You enjoy just riding mm. your bike. I, you've done the odd bit Bro of racing, kind of. Do you mean like broken record kind of feeling? no <laughs> almost feels like you, you come across a bit like how in the surfy that you're just chasing this wave that yeah like the feeling the the vibe that the travel that's your thing whereas some people i think go through a lot of other stages of it so maybe they're chasing racing yeah or and a then trick or a, yeah, yeah a trick whatever and then i feel like with my personal mountain biking journey it did start out as very much just chasing riding dirt jumps and just that feeling and just yeah. the hang and then the crew and stuff like that then it went a bit racy with the forecast and some downhill and then it's 100 percent gone back the opposite way of just chasing the going for a ride and enjoying it and just riding for yeah. the sake of riding and that's what i loved about that edit it sort of just showed In a it. guy who was doing it for the achieve. sake of doing it 100 percent, yeah and it, it does make you think because i often do feel about like with riding um, there, there is this, you know, going out and riding for the sake of riding. It, how do you explain it? You know, we often you go out for a ride and you always take a photo. It's like, it, is something lost in that? Do you know what I mean? Do Definitely. you have to share it? Do you have to be like, I've been for a ride? Mate, it's, or are you it's doing the it because you actually weirdest period at the minute because the weirdest, certainly it's been that way for a while with social media, but like 
definitely if, in my circle of friends it's fuck it's so weird at the minute because it's like it never used to be a question like whether we're making a video or something like that you know and now you kind of you're like oh should we go riding at rogate for instance if if it was open and then yeah. and then it'd be you you wouldn't know if it's if people bringing along cameras is it like now turning into a video and like honestly it's fucking relentless like I, I did a trip um when we weren't in lockdown to chick sands and it was like me pilg bren yeah, bernard that, yeah. sam reynolds everyone's p- filming a video everyone's <laughs> like is it is it yeah. is it actually riding anymore and is it maybe it's okay yeah. to just go and do that anyway but still the ultimate has for every one of those rides for me there has to be five actual rides like there's True only that. so much i don't know i wouldn't want it to turn into that I don't want no. to... Yeah. No, it is a weird one, especially, like, you know, with you being involved with a bike brand. And to some extent, me with a little bit of a bike brand, like, you want to show you're out riding. Yeah. But then, but is the vibe that you just out riding and no one knows about it, is that, like, even yeah. cooler? I don't know. It's such a strange... There's a fine balance. And I think, like you said, it's maybe a case of doing X amount of rides, but then one of them you go out for the sole purpose of making some content and then... That's the rest it. Of them I don't. I want it to be defined before I leave the house, personally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there's some days I don't feel that. I just feel like going biking, and yeah, I don't know. Definitely. So speaking about that, like the whole vlog thing and, and whatever, you were at Bren's. <laughs> I don't oh. even know what to call it. Roof attempt <laughs> house jump. Have we not spoken since then? No, we didn't. We didn't speak about it last time because. Uh, Sven just you know I, it had, I had it on my list so obviously I wanted to know about the yeah. whole experience of being there but we didn't so what on earth was going on that day dude do we need a word with him <laughs> what's going on <laughs> <laughs> well that's actually an interesting that's, that's, it kind of goes with what we're talking about um, the YouTube thing and this sort of like desperate need to constantly put out content so right so full stop you and I watched Seth when we were younger. Yeah. To jump your house is co- cool, regardless of video or not. Like I, I would love to jump my house, just as a thing to be to have it done, to have a picture of me jumping over my house. I would be stoked, and that's without YouTube, and that's without it even. I don't even care if I put it on Instagram. I would love to jump my house. Full stop. And I think <laughs> Bren would feel the same. Yeah. So Bren was like, uh, he pulled out his downhill bike. When I got there, and I was like, "What? What? Why? Are you go- why a downhill bike? Like to me, that's like the worst." Did you know what was going on before you like, rocked up to this? To this? Yeah, house? I got I okay. got asked to actually film, so I okay. was actually allowed to be there. Because again, again, you can't like. I feel like the whole time we're about to get it wrong. So you know, like I don't know what's allowed. I don't know at yeah. all. But I'm outside. I'm filming, so I'm doing a job. That was the idea, anyway. <laughs> I mean, you only have to watch it to see it was. Fairly non-essential, I'd say. But like, <laughs> um, so yeah, but Bren goes, I was like, wait, I would do that on a hardtail before I did it because obviously you're searching for speed. I don't know, I would have done it on a hardtail. Really, yeah. Just to clear it. You know, just because then you can just race, mm. you can push through the lip. Like yeah, a downhill bike for me, point, I don't actually. have much experience riding downhill bikes, but I don't want like a... Yeah, I can't imagine like a, a pretty steep step up on a downhill bike with not much speed is the most fun. Yeah, uphill doing. run up being towed by a motorbike. Anyway, when it <laughs> sounds so ridiculous. As soon as the <laughs> as soon as um Stolf started towing him in, I was just like, whoa, he's actually going so fast. Like a third mm. gear on a moto in that setting sounds gnarly, you know? And yeah. uh so I was thinking, oh maybe it's not a bad shout on a downhill bike, but anyway, I went no, no what I was get back getting back to what I was gonna say. He chose the downhill bike in his words, because people froth over downhill bikes on YouTube. <laughs> That's the most youtube thing ever. <laughs> so, he's pit- so at some point, we've got to like, establish where the lines draw. Are you, like, do you do stuff just solely for YouTube? Because you know? in which case, probably having your dick out, maybe yeah. not dick, arse out, doing it in speedos, probably get more views. So are you going to do that? What yeah. about in a Mr. Blobby suit on a downhill yeah. bike? On a tandem, True. you know what tandem, I mean. Like, where, where do you? So it has to be. It has to have some some kind of. It has to link with real life in some way. That's why I never. I never really give a fuck about doing videos like on YouTube. If I'm already going riding, then 
it's a tiny bit extra effort. As long as it's actually happening, then I feel like I'm it's happy. more relatable. That's just from my yeah. personal experience. Whereas there's certain, <laughs> there's certain YouTubers that that is not relatable. Like it's not a relatable thing. You know, building a a fucking I don't know. <laughs> a, not I'm not even going to say jump over your house because in a way it's kind of relatable because we yeah. could all do it. You could build a jump. But over you do want to do that, so I, I would stand by him on the the. The idea is yeah. cool, I think, because yeah. I'd like to jump over my house. I'd love to say I've jumped over my house. Yeah. Man, okay. I'm 35 and I want to jump over my house. What is? Dude, I mean, why not? That. Yeah. But yeah, so... where, where do you draw the line? So would it? So if you then found out that you get an extra hundred thousand views if you do it in speedos, would you do it in speedos? If <laughs> you bolt a dildo onto your helmet, well, actually, I'm guilty of that. So. <laughs> You know what I mean, though. There has to be yeah, a line. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, um, I tread that line. I don't tread that line finely at all because I don't want to do stuff that is wow. too. Boop, 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 boop. But it anyway, was, it was gnarly, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was gnarly. Really gnarly. I was over the other side. All I was really there for was to get the reaction because I would have put a good amount of money on him landing. T- you know, like a sheet of ply down. I actually, had, we'd placed a bet. I said he's going to land a sheet of ply down because just when you hear the motor going down the road, yeah. obviously it's very hard to judge speed. Like, even if you've got a guy going third on a moto, mm. the mm. difference between pulling off the... Dude. So, yeah. So, people, I, I guess it's like, he's always going to get ridiculed but for coming up on a jump that short, but... <laughs> I would have, I would have thought he had enough speed. I had money on him overshooting a little bit, so right. And we're is quite. The, is he trying angle. again? Like, what's the deal? Is it left? Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's really. It. As, in the words of his doting wife, that's enough, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow. Who knows? Certainly maybe, something maybe there, man. Certainly something. That was certainly no, uh, right. a piece of history for mountain biking, right there for sure. And yeah, exactly. So that was really fun, regardless of how ridiculous it was. That was really, it was really fun, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's been laughs out, out of it. There's been, I mean, the comments were class. The whole thing was yeah, definitely fair play to him for giving it a shot. To be honest, it was uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm interested in wow. seeing where the line does get drawn, because certainly when you look at other realms of YouTube, the line like it goes fairly wacky, doesn't it? Like yeah, if you're just it doing it for a video, I've never really thought. Really, it differs. It doesn't even differ from filming a section, does it? That's as weird. All right, drop in three, two, yeah. one. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a strange one. It is. It's. Um, mm. I don't know. I don't even know what I really think of it. If I'm honest, I'm really torn with the whole thing. I think it was really cool that he dried it. I just think you just think, like you say, where is the line? Like, where's this all going? I've no um, idea where it's going, really. No, it's kind of interesting and kind of exciting at the same time, as as well as being kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But I'm stoked he tried it, it anyway. People hey, actually, seem to on, dig it. Yeah, Sorry. on that note, I actually did a um, that misspent summers um, 2020 annual thing has just come out, and I I wrote a piece yeah. in that, and it oh, was cool. Probably the saltiest um, piece ever. Oh, really? On, yeah. <laughs> Me at my oh, shittiest. One, so you, you have to check that out and our listeners will have to check that out as well because yeah. I think what those guys do is really cool and I think it's kind of the opposite of a TikTok world. It's actually journalism and people's thoughts and opinions, which I really value despite mm. also contributing to the Mr. Blobby speedos yeah, YouTube I world. I, think, I feel like you egg the people on who do that stuff. You just like the yeah, instigator. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Just but, like, oh, I'm not doing it. You guys do it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Wow. But wow. yeah, I, I think miss that. That's a, that's going to be a cool read. And I saw that Warner's written something in there. And Warner, oh, Warner showed me a section actually from. Um, he showed me uh, a, th- a, a, a like almost like a chapter that he had written, and it made me. Obviously, he's thinking about it too. I don't know if I'm blowing a secret here, but how much? Mm. Well, let's do a let's do a bit of a survey. How much would you? love to read a rob warner book about the life of rob warner that was funny actually because that was one of my questions to him but was we never, it yeah yeah i was like why haven't you written a book like why isn't there a, a rob warner book i'd read that book because i know pete has got one coming out right yeah yeah which which will obviously be good yeah 
we, and I and I tried naming it, but he didn't text me back. So, <laughs> ready? Go on, let's hear it. Won't book down. <laughs> It's genius, bro. <laughs> and you just got dialing tone. Just it's nothing. It's nothing. Won't book down. Keep trying, I it was dude. Brilliant. I thought I, it was I like it. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> what a Warner book would be. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, a, 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 a Warner book would be. Um, Wouldn't it? So fantastic. Good. Yeah, it would be good. Yeah, there you go. Um, or a documentary, just yeah, yeah. too right. Let I me... think it'd be a really good like public speaker as well. You know, going and doing like a, a talk about his life would be. Just Has he done insane. that actually? Has he done that with um? Are oh, the speakers from the Edge thing? He yeah, might have, he might have. You know, I went to the I went to the um, uh, Hans Ray one, and that was oh, one yeah. of the coolest things to do because Hans is a obviously a hero of yeah. mountain biking, and and then somehow I don't know. You've got so much you can learn from that dude, like. Uh, if you're a if you're a pro rider, certainly, because he's sure. just like an action figure. He himself yeah. treats himself as a brand, and it's all deliberate, and say, it's yeah, all yeah, smart, yeah. and it's fucking really amazing. And still to this day, you speak to brands that deal with him, and he's got like the best book, you know, like um, resume yeah. in all of mountain bike. He'd be a great guest for this. For Let's get I, we could get Hans on definitely. Yeah, it'd be good, wouldn't it? No way. Yeah, it would be fun though. I, I think what? I think Hans would be a great guest. I've never I've spoken to him once actually in my entire life, so I'd, I'd really like. No him way. Once. Yeah, I'd like that. Let's no, do it. Let's no make way. It See the what? joke I'm doing because he's Hans. No way, Ray. I'm just. Doing it over I'm sorry. And over again. I'm sorry. Okay. And laughter. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Insert some laughter there. Uh, I'm making a note, Hans Ray. Let's make a note. Let's do it. I'll, I'll message him in a bit. Oh, even better. Yeah. Yeah. Saves me trying to link people up although we might that one that I spoke to you about might actually happen next week potentially no, no fucking <laughs> way <laughs> yeah so Whoa. we'll keep that one under wraps because it might not happen but Dude, I'll be so might. nervous yeah keep it under wraps yeah absolutely okay. so I've I'll, got my so thing I'm... that I watched this week by the way that, that uh, our listeners and you can join in with if you've got a load of time to watch an evening. It's a limited series. I think 10 episodes, maybe less, maybe more. I don't know. It's called It's a Sin. I don't know if you've seen it. It's about the no. AIDS epidemic and it is Ooh. fucking gnarly, dude. It's obviously yeah. a, a period of time that was that I didn't live for, so I didn't see really what went on. But yeah. there are definitely like parallels in the level of uncertainty with the current pandemic that we're going through. But really? I've got to say... Netflix. I think it's BBC. I think okay. it's BBC. Let me just check one second. I need to... Um, it's a sin. It's a sin. It's a sin. Pretty sure it's BBC. When was that? AIDS... Oh, God, I never thought I'd say that on a podcast. When was the AIDS epidemic? Dude, I think what what I've learned from the last one and talking about the desalination pro- process, I think it's best that me and you steer clear of hard, cold, hard facts... And carry yeah. on with just sort of like the broad Dude, bro science. The messages about desalination. <laughs> Honestly, the messages. I mean, God, look at the YouTube comments. Oh, my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. You put it out there, dude. You do long form. You're going to reveal yourself as exactly as what you are. And yeah, I'm an idiot. Exactly. I know it. And maybe yeah. you're an idiot, too. Still not had a, com- a concise answer, though. And I'll throw that out there. Still not had a yes. You can buy water from a for, from a bottle that is from the sea. Not had that yet. Just had that. Maybe still, some sea. He's still not taking the loss. I'm still he's not still, taking it. He's still going for the W. That's a that's a champion. That's champion spirit, oh, dude. I'm going down fighting on this one. Last chance. Qualifier. Until someone mails me a bottle of water that is from the ocean, <laughs> has no salt in it. I ain't believing you. Oh, oh dear. So yeah. Anyway, we're not. We're going to steer clear of any actual scientific facts. But it's a yeah. sin. Basically, follows like a group of young gay guys during the AIDS uh, epidemic. Is it an epidemic or a pandemic? Either way. But yeah. how absolutely terrifying it was, and how much of a different world it. You know, like like you take it for granted. I've always kind of. I've I've always kind of well. Quite frankly, I couldn't care less if you're into boys or girls, and that, that or That's in between. Kind of, yeah. Do yeah. whatever you want. I'm, yeah. I'm uninterested. But it wasn't always like that. It seems from the, you know, no, it wasn't. 
when you watch it is insane and obviously at that at that time anyone who was homophobic was just jumping straight on board the kind of aids is a is a homosexual illness it's like the right. wrath of god the lightning bolt of god and and it's so horrible and and like yeah it's a tearjerker dude not going to lie i think a bit i think a bit of dust landed in my eye at the end but there's a oh, chick the, there's a chick who also stars in it ah it's too difficult to explain but the, the basically the the mother figure for all of these young gay guys um does a speech at the end about how so many people have died in silence they did they were too they too filled with shame to even talk to their parents about what they were dying of and and essentially aids back then i know you can survive from it now and yeah. live on medication and you can live a uh, you can actually live a normal life expectancy, which is fantastic. But mm. back then, it was a death sentence, and the, the, these people were dying in the, the most horrific possible ways, in the most lonely ways. And it's quite something to watch, dude. It is, it is gnarly. So, right. it doesn't sound that cheery, but I would say it's an important thing to watch. Yeah, but sometimes you need that. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes yeah. you need not cheery, right? Absolutely. And then, obviously, there's loads of really lovely moments in it where. They're having yeah. a having a good time. They're having a good old fashioned gay time, dude. They're, they're living a they're living a lot of life as well as you know all of the hardships and stuff. But yeah, it's it, I I thought that was really cool. It's a sin. And did you find out where it is? BBC. I fucking didn't. The one job I had. No. What, where is it? Uh, where was it? I'm pretty sure it's BBC, dude. Okay. Um, well, just while you do that, I watched uh, a really good movie the other day uh, on Saturday. Yeah, on Netflix, and it's called The Dig, and I highly recommend it. Channel Four, it... just do it. <laughs> Channel Four. Sorry, carry on. Channel what? Four. So more four. We can you can find it. I yes. Believe. Yeah. Channel Four. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I watched a movie on Netflix. It's, it's recent. Oh, it's called The Dig. Really good. Just a nice, nice film. You know, sometimes you don't want any sex, no violence, no gore. Yeah. Just a nice film, and it's about yeah. um, the discovery of an Anglo-Saxon ship on someone's land it's all about archaeology and stuff but oh cool night just a nice film based in suffolk feel good just a feel good like nice film yeah nice nothing, not you know not too taxing just yeah just nice so highly recommend good um, i like that i, I tuned yeah. into um the grinch the other day and even that's got some bloody messages hasn't it underlying like messages christmas yeah <laughs> yeah it was christmas when i watched it but oh, the other uh, day but yeah the other day yeah <laughs> But um, yeah, I agree. Sometimes you don't really want any messages. You just want to see a guy digging up an Anglo-Saxon boat in his garden. Yeah, exactly. I hear you. What's it called again? The Dig. The Dig. Netflix. Nice film. Nice film. Nice film. A good, uh, good one for to sit down with your partner and just watch a nice film. Excellent. Yeah. What have you, what have you been vibing to in the headphones? What's going on? Right. Anything let new? me let me find. Um, oh man, where is it? I I wrote it down somewhere. It's an Afu Ra track. Ooh, what's this? Um, a artist on. Oh, man, why can't I find it? What an idiot! I like the name already. Yeah, there you go. Dun 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 dun. Oh, I might have to even. But yeah, I think it's called Defeat, and it's um a, a premiere track. So, Afu Ra. Right. Defeat. We'll go with that anyway, but to okay. be honest, yeah. Afu Ra, Defeat. I'm writing it down because I always listen to him and put him in the podcast playlist. Nice, so we'll nice. When we find it. Afu Ra. Um, perfect. Very good. Oh, um, What's yours? Yeah, I was, yeah. my f- all-time favourite band, Atmosphere. Just put a new song out. Uh, and it is called... It is called God's Bathroom Floor. And it is nice. Minnesota hip-hop. Beautiful. Nice. Love me some atmosphere, man. Love me some atmosphere. It's one of those bands that just I can always have it on. I always just chill to it. Whatever. If I'm cleaning the house, it's always a bit of atmosphere. Just got happy memories traveling around listening to atmosphere. Nice. And also, I I really dislike that. I like this song, but just going to throw it out there. Cardi B, new song called Up. Really? No, I haven't heard it. I don't know who it is, but it's... You don't know who Cardi B is? No, I don't know who that is, but I've heard the name over and over again. But yeah. Yeah. Is she on TikTok, probably? 
Probably, yeah. yeah. Probably on TikTok, yeah. She's, yeah, she's definitely on that. Yeah. Cody B's new song. I shouldn't like it. I'd hate, I should hate it. I think she's an awful role model for young women. <laughs> All she does is talk about sex and yeah. horror, like awful lyrics. She, she shouldn't look up to her, but she can make a beat. <laughs> so, I'll check it out. Is it popular at the minute? Yeah, it's a new song. It's, right. it's, uh, yeah, it's I'll check Deeks' latest Insta post and it'll probably be the music in there. Yeah, it will yeah, be. Yeah, okay, yeah. perfect. Or his TikTok, it'll definitely be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I did. Oh, I, gosh, I hate that I even shared that, but there you go. No, dude, respect for sharing that. Sometimes respect. you just need a beat, don't you? Yeah, Sometimes there you, you go. Just need a beat. Just so. need a bit Cardi B. David <laughs> rocking Cardi B. Cardi B. What about um, Pink Bike Photo of the Year? You're in yeah, it four I'm times. In it, I'm in it three times. Three times. The, three the times, odds are yeah. the odds are stacked. So. When's I don't know where finished, I'm at you know? now. I don't know, but I've never been in it three times. I don't think they knew. I think they're, Have you they're won probably going to. No, I don't think so. Mm. I don't know. Let's. Okay. See, I'm, I'm going to have a look for an update. See if I've been completely knocked out yet. Oh, because it goes to like a, um, a round robin almost thing, doesn't That's it? That's it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you. Or oh, maybe it's all still going. I don't know if we're in the second round. No, we're not. Yeah, so get on there. Any any listeners that can get on there. They've pitched me. Oh, yeah. They obviously know they've got they've put me in too many times, so they've put me up against myself in So hey, really? Yeah, so I've got one photo with Nathan Hughes from when I went to Italy. I've got one photo with Rue Fowler when Sahara. I went to Sahara Desert, and I've got one photo with Jacob Gibbons and Even when I went to Madeira. So what a That's lucky it. guy. Dude, so lucky. Three locations, three photos, three chances. Yeah. Imagine pink if you went one, two, three in the pink bike photo challenge. <laughs> yeah, that'd be decent. I'd be taking home all of zero pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is a prize for the photographer, though, isn't there? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I, I hope yeah, I, hope I um, can help. Because the guys in Sheffield won it before, Babel and uh, my mate Will. Yeah, jet ski came. Jet yeah, ski, yeah, pink yeah, bike yeah, jet nice, ski nice. rigged up, Super Bowl nice. like a Super Bowl style ring that you get pink for ski. it. Pink ski. Pink ski, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man, can we talk about the speaking of pink? Can we talk about the bike yet, or are we leaving that? For... Oh, I'm editing a YouTube as we speak, so that'll probably be up. Yeah, that'll be up by the time this is out. So yeah, I've done my I've done my bike spray. It looks really cool. I haven't picked it up it. yet. I went in and did it all myself. So I spent a whole day at Fat Creations. Um, wow. Work experience at Fat Creations, and Ali was so cool. He proper let me do each of the. Yeah, I, I I did loads of it. He obviously really? went around tidying shit up, but yeah, it was amazing. And it and they the attention to detail that they go through is insane. So that video I don't know if, is off the chain. It's really yeah. cool. Man. Yeah, it does so look sick. cool, doesn't it? Yeah, so yeah. so when you take a bike to Fat Creations, not only do you change the color and make it look cool, you also they they take all of the factory paint off. Now a factory paint shop is like a conveyor belt most of the time and they put on a, a thick bit of paint so that you don't get as many warranty problems and you don't mm. get paint crack blah blah this that so when you get a fat creations bike it actually ends up lighter than when by a fair bit as well like they no take way. it all the way back to carbon and then their process is like the bare minimum to make it look really yeah. like a, yeah really cool that's why most of their most of their businesses is road bikes ah uh, because it, it makes it lighter that's insane. it makes it lighter really which is what wow so obviously road bikers are all over that like yeah, time yeah, trialers yeah. are all over that shit and it's so, come out as good as or if better than what you imagined oh mate it, I, I've got to say I do I'm, I'm into sort of black understated bikes and things in general <laughs> and I do have a bright pink bike ready to be built now they'll be replacing you know that, that one the original bike that you've taken the, the inspiration from have you still got that yeah Is that, okay because I know you got the photo and stuff I didn't know if yeah, it was, still if got it was it, an actual yeah. still there right yeah, still got it. Yeah, so we'll yeah. have a direct comparison with those two built up. I'm looking it's forward to it, man, because I'm going to be riding soon. I might even, after this podcast, go, try and go out for an e-bike ride. Oh, nice. Which will be it'll be like eight weeks since breaking my ankle, so it's pretty yeah. pretty good going, I reckon. I've held off long enough. I'm walking without a stick and stuff now, so I'm really excited to get on the e and hopefully just spin pedals, feel the wind through my hair. But we'll see. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, Stoke very you, excited Stoke about that. It. It's been yeah. a long eight weeks. Fucking it's hasn't it just? Way. Hasn't it just? But yeah. yeah, so that'd be good. Um yeah, I'm quite excited about the pink bike actually, but we'll keep we'll keep that uh yeah, you'll you'll get to see the whole process, how much they actually let me do. So that'd be quite cool. cool. Link and above. 
do go find it watch it thanks watch the video. bro nice get one get involved yeah get involved like and subscribe so, yeah like and subscribe <laughs> like and subscribe exactly yeah so we've got listener questions today right yeah, should we do some? Let's do them. Are we doing dope or nope? No, it's just questions, right? Just questions, man. Should have nice. done dope or nope. I like a bit of dope nice. or nope. I've not yeah. put that up for a little while. Um, ooh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. How many so we got? Just... we got? We got shit loads or we got just a few? There's... Too many, basically. Oh, yeah. Always too There's many, right? Lot. There's okay, too cool. many. There's at least five or six swipes of the finger on Instagram. Okay, cool. So we'll just... Should we just go just go through? Let's just go see with what it, dude. Yeah. I've not looked either, so usually I do take a bit of a look at these. Yeah. First, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's a good one," or whatever. I've not looked. At, I did look at the first one. So whoever that was, I forgot your name. I'll probably find it. Who? We first can't say was. that. No, we can't. So it's too less rude. Of, less of the disgusting chicken messages, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sort of sick of that now. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was a chicken one. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, dude, Fucking you up. made your bed. <laughs> Gotta lay in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first one. Stuart Ketchley. So this is the most recent one, too, because we're going from top to bottom. Nice, nice. Um, that what way we don't have to do a chicken one. What up, Stuart? Stuart Ketchley. Are your desktop icons messy or structured? Asking for a friend, also twin screen or not? So... What's your desktop look like? It looks like loads and loads of screenshot because I just screenshot things the whole time. So it's really, really messy. Also, right. I always use hot corners. If you're a Mac person, I use hot corners. So I just never close any windows. I have all of them open and then go up to the top left. Right. So yeah, my desktop is a shit show, dude. It's a scrap heap. Wow. So you? I'm the absolute opposite because I'm super OCD. <laughs> so. Yeah. There isn't a single folder on my desktop. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I have one file on there, which is last week's lockdown companion MP4. Good man. That is T- it. There's tidy nothing guy. else on it. I, I could I could have guessed actually that you'd be like that. To be honest. Really. But if you do, if you just do Apple Space and type in Hot Corners, yeah, and it'll it'll come up with Hot Corners, and then you select top top left and click Mission Control. That's how I run my shit. So I run run it with everything open and then i just whiz up to the top corner and then it opens up all of the screens and i select one so then i have loads of shit open at the same time so it is as hectic as probably i appear yeah i've got more into putting things on this external hard drive since um since we started where's ollie actually i was like okay i should probably keep all these because before legally i'll be honest i've deleted everything yeah i have nothing at all yeah yeah, yeah. no episode no videos it's all gone yeah yeah so oh, there yeah, you go. started just boom on that. Um, okay, uh, what else we got? At Oakley9283. Ollie, will yes. there ever be a Death Grip Challenge 3.0? I believe so. Always looking to uh, take my brakes off and ride down a hill terrified into a turn. Also, I'm um, undisputed champion c- currently. Really? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the champ right now. I won the last one. Okay. You know? Has there been two? There's... there's yeah, there's been two. Yeah, it's been, that's why he's asking about a three point oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I um yeah I need to defend my title. So I'm there. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Do you know, it's I, th- th- those videos are brilliant. Such an amazing idea by Tom Grundy. Shout out to Tom Grundy from GMBN. But that they um <coughs> it's, it's such an amazing idea because honestly, it is that scary. So. I actually thought when he first said it, I thought that it, we would we would have loads of crashes and we'd be joking around. But as you go further up the hill, it just becomes more intense and it is for real scary. Yeah. Like proper scary. Yeah, no doubt. I like that. I, like, I mean, I don't watch that much other mountain bike stuff. Yeah. But EMBN did that video with Bren, Petey and Warner recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trials, which was really cool. I right, enjoyed that one. I did yeah, watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know it's a different number, but you know he's asked about 3.0. So, it's good. This is a great tenuous link. Um, you, do you follow Bam Margera? I never know how to say his name on Instagram. I, I don't. Um, I don't. I found it all a bit miserable, really. The the, the end of Jackass and them kind of yeah. all being a bit druggy and drinky. I, I, didn't, well, I sort of stopped following him, really. I'll be honest. Because I used to follow him when he, before when he was just a pro skater. I would... Yeah. I would relentlessly follow vhs 
videos of him and movie CKY, segments. I found him yeah. really, really interesting. And he was like, he's like a skater that I, I used to really enjoy watching like really fast skaters skate. Yeah. Maybe don't go on his Instagram him. then because it looks like things have taken a massive downturn over the last sort of week. Actually, so this, sad. Yeah, like real bad. Like he's he's obviously oh. having some sort of um, breakdown and it's, yeah, there was going to be a Jackass 4, but from what I understand, he's been like called out of it because of having a relapse. And then now he's creating his own Jackass 4 and it, it's sad. I just wondered if you'd seen it. I don't mean oh, to put no. a, a dampener on this, but obviously for me, and probably you and a lot of people who listen to this, that era is so iconic to me. Like that is my childhood, dude. Like watching well, can't Jackass. Kill yourself and the, yeah, yeah, dude. Like watching Jackass and being into the music and all that sort of stuff. And then being a massive fan of the films, and it actually has been an inspiration throughout my life. Like Jackass was a big part of my life growing up. Yeah, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Like it was. Like it. Get, yeah. I, I like the culture, the the sheep, the clothing, everything. And to see someone like Bam, who I used to really look up to, just obviously having real issues is really sad and mate it sucks it it really sucks when someone's there as well when someone's you know he's fucking made it he's made a load of money he's chilling he's got a big house he's got his skate park at his house like yeah it, it just goes to show it doesn't mean it doesn't mean shit you just have to you have to look after yourself you have to make sure yeah. you're all good regardless of um it doesn't matter how much money you got if you're sad you're sad and he certainly obviously struggles with stuff hopefully he's all good Mm, but yeah for sure uh okay i think what it was sorry to drag on no, about no. it but i think what it was was they were rewarded for a high level of being out of control and crazy and that in itself is gnarly i think because you get to a stage yeah. and you might not want to be out of control and crazy and then it's it's become a part of your identity by then so i 100%. think like yeah, I, I do feel bad for him. I think that Pritchard fella um, from yeah, what is the, it, the I'm Welsh sure. version? Yeah, he's yeah. Um, he's a fucking triathlete now or something. Yeah, I think I think he does. He's he is, doing he some is cool thing. vegan. Got a cooking show on BBC, which is really there. Good you go. As well. I didn't even know, but yeah, there you go. Yeah. So he's he's done a full one eighty. Because let's be honest, you don't want to be in your late even. You don't even want to be in your late thirties, fucking sticking pins in your arms and jumping in a fire. I don't want to be doing that Probably shit anyway. Not. I'll, 35 so yeah. yeah it is a weird one that that era you know that mtv era and how much fame they got and money they've been and like you say the yeah. level of being stupid was so high you're always trying yeah. to do yourself fucking, yeah and some people have dealt with it really well but some like bam it's on struggle street yeah definitely yeah definitely it is uh, anything you do you sort of attach to your identity don't you i saw a really good thing by one of my favorite surfers on stab i'm trying to find it now mm. um one of my favorite surfers <laughs> he is actually my favorite surfer okay yes so um uh, i can't he... wait till you go surfing dude <laughs> i've been surf come on dude i've been surfing when i was in bali the other day I... uh dane reynolds so right he says it's a weird thing growing up as a pro surfer your identity is based off surfing well and getting coverage for it and being being praised by fans and sponsors magazine photos video parts and comp results are embedded in your self-worth when it starts going away you can get lost and fall into i don't know a crisis and i fuck you, you hear that don't you just mm. imagine if you're one of these dudes who's fucking the top of joyride and <sighs> I've never yeah. experienced that. I've never had to worry about that. I've just dribbled along. But like, if as soon as that goes away, like that's fucking. You're the guy that's the crazy guy that does the double flip, or you're the guy that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I worry about even some. Yeah. Even to a certain extent, some of my friends. Like once you remove those things from life, and you're just taking out the rubbish and you're doing the leaves on the lawn like everyone else. Like it. it yeah, it is a thing worth thinking about. I think hundred percent. You know, one of the one of the one of the worst sort of how do you put it? Like one of the oh God, I'm sorry, I have my mind blank. One of the ways I've seen that play out the most in my life is through Speedway. So Speedway oh, okay. is arguably one of the most dangerous sports on earth. You know, you're going seventy mile an hour with no brakes in a circle. Yeah, with four three other guys and especially when you're racing like league speedway. So a lot of my friends, you know, that I used to have when I was doing the speedway circuit, doing the camper vans and stuff, they'd ride three nights or four nights a week. So you'd ride in England, 
you'd ride in Sweden, Poland, and then back to England for, for the, an away meeting. So this life was just insane. I mean, you're constantly traveling, but you're constantly in an adrenaline yeah. like mode because every night you're doing the most dangerous sport almost. Yeah, and it is like imagine. and it is like person on person racing, which is how it's, yeah. it's, it's different to up. clock. It's, it's different to clock for sure. It's yeah. way more hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. It is the most gnarly thing you can imagine. But then what you used to notice is as soon as that season ended the guys didn't know what to do with themselves because they're yeah. just like, whoa, 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 now what? So it goes to like drink, drugs, yeah. stupid shit on other types of bikes. So it is, it, it, you know, once you're in that adrenaline cycle, I think it's super interesting of yeah. knowing like how to remove yourself from it and how to get that fixed, but yeah. not really, yeah. Super is. interesting how different it is for everyone. Like I don't even think about adrenaline. I clearly must, I clearly must like it because I like going quick and, and given the opportunity, if I didn't, worry about killing other people i drive like such a bell end on the road i don't because i yeah. worry too much about killing other people but clearly like that means going quick is like an adrenaline thing in some mm. some way i tell you yeah. what if i if i finish speedway do you know what i'd do at the end of my career at finishing speedway <laughs> i'd try it clockwise just give it a go see if you like it <laughs> turn right <laughs> yeah get the foot peg on the floor yeah like fuck it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's interesting i feel like surfing as well it's just so far i'd it's like advanced to mountain biking. I feel like surfing and the bo- in board sports in general is always a few years ahead. So watching what's happening in those sports to me is always super interesting. Yeah, it's that's true. That's almost yeah. what we're gonna gonna see. I feel like. Yeah. So Clay Clay now. always subscribed to Stab magazine and just because he knew I was into graphic design. Yeah. He'd just leave Stab Stab mags around my house, so I had this. They're like really collectible. They're I've, I've had to give them back because he's got a full comprehensive oh, really? collection. Yeah, but yeah. That's, you just look through it and you're just like, "Fuck!" And actually, that said, it, it reminds me of Dirt Magazine or even these misspent summers mags. The yeah. Stab Magazine does. I always think that the, with those, you know, if you want to look at what's going to be happening in mountain biking in two years with the colours and the general, you know, like you said, logos. Yeah, hundred like percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at surfing like that. That's where it's going. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, at Tom the Ginge e Gingy, uh, favorite place in the UK to ride? Um, Surrey Hills, man. You Sheffield. There you go. Big Fukin District. No, nothing like home, is there? Home. Nothing like home, man. Home sweet. And it doesn't low. even necessarily mean that it's the best riding, but it's the best people. And yeah, it's exactly. Scene. It's all about the crew all about the crew but not at the moment because you can't see them so, exactly because because they're all a potential threat yeah <laughs> uh at threlfall dot chris uh dog muck on trails if you have a dog call but please pick up the mess it's not a question it's just a statement so thanks, <laughs> thanks <Chris. laughs> test it so boy, brother <laughs> <laughs> we're with you right there chris you keep fighting that good fight i tell you what that said i'm not with the idea that you take the the poo and put it into a plastic bag Strange. That to you know me, I bought just myself kick it in a bush, day, dude. Which is the most middle-aged gift to buy yourself. I bought myself a litter picker. Did you? Good man. Yeah. Yeah. And I've just been going out and just picking up some litter. I had a heavy load evenings. this morning, dude. I never want to upload any any of my litter picking because it seems so signally so. Yeah. Where was that? F- fucking back door, dude. But I but I litter pick it every day. It's a walk I I do every day. Yeah. So just the amount this morning fucked me off too much. I didn't want to be preachy. I didn't want to be give me a pat on the back, but it's too much, dude. It's beer cans, beer bottles, fags, mm. plastic bags, gloves, face masks. <laughs> it's, it's it's just insane. I just thought, yeah. So I did. Yeah. A, I actually did an Instagram. I did a virtue signaling Instagram post. I saw it. Did you? Did yeah, you judge? Sorry, yeah. Did you, were you like you fucking some guy? Nah, I think um, awareness, man. It's just awareness. It's, yeah, true. To some yeah, extent, true. it's just awareness. It's like someone. I, I did it. I was like, huh? I should really do a little pick again. Yeah, so I'm. A, I'm a, I want to make it clear. I sound like one of those bell ends that says I like their earlier stuff. But I'm a lifelong litter picker, and it's through being told off by my mum. Realistically, <laughs> it's why. It's for no reason other than Claire Wilkins. <laughs> yeah. It does make you think, though. Like, who who even thinks it's okay to do that? Who who is that person? You want to say, like, <sighs> dude, what did you think was going to happen? Where did you think it was going? Anyway, and they go like this: you'll pick it up, and then yeah, I'll exactly. Go, yeah, oh, it'll decompose. Yeah, right. <laughs> it decomposes. It's glass. Yeah, fucking yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, at 
Sean, I believe that says, Smith, 0, zero. Who would win in a fight between Deeks or David? Deeks. Yeah, Deeks. Is, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, David. Nice. VW Surf Bump. Are you actually going to do listener questions this week? Yes. I should really read these before I start reading them. <laughs> uh, oh, I've had this one quite a lot, actually. So, at Airbound23. 23. 23. How do you watch Supercross in the UK? Valid question. I get this all the time. So, let me break it down. A few different ways. You can either not be a cheap ass and buy the Supercross Live race pass. Or you can share it with someone. Either way, you can get a Supercross Live race pass. That way, you're putting money back into the sport. You're supporting people. Whatever. Yeah, I'm all for that, actually. But yeah. also, there's but offroadvideos.org. <laughs> also, there's offroadvideos.org. <laughs> so, offroadvideos.org seem to put them up pretty, pretty fast. Sometimes, it's a bit of a shitty stream. Um, but he breaks it down into all the different heat races and then the main events are in a separate video. And the best part about offroadvideos.org, which Supercross Live should take um, a look at, is he doesn't do spoilers. Because I hate that. really pisses me off. That I've said, honestly, I've emailed him twice now, I think, maybe even three times. Like, why put the results on the home screen yeah. when you're going to watch the video? Come on. Yeah, that is insane, grip. isn't it? Yeah. NBA uh, League YouTube as well at the moment YouTube scores. are putting them up there's some on YouTube yeah so you can watch it it's just not easy and if you're in the States NBC or CBS um, do, uh, at Rocksteady Sambo do Ooh. you ride by sight or memory well, that's quite an interesting question actually from an interesting guy very well, interesting guy. well I guess I guess the um, I really like Personally, I would say I'm much more into memory riding, knowing a track and getting it down more and more and more until I'm doing triples, I'm jumping out of turns. I I really like that about riding, like like doing something over and over again and getting it down and having little fun things that you do every, every lap. I, I have that across all of the Surrey Hills. I have stupid little targets that I make, jumping past a route or doubling out of a turn or tripling a section. That's yeah. almost my favourite thing in riding. Whereas you get a lot of people, I don't know like yourself, whether you're into blind racing or like blind riding. I don't mind it. I'd like to think I'm okay. I'm relatively competent at it. But I don't. Yeah. again, as I've got older, I kind of enjoyed just session in one corner for Likewise. three hours. And I think that my me hitting something blind, yeah, it's reactive and you're looking at the trail as it comes. But to me, it's not as fun as getting something 100% dialed and down. I don't know whether that's because I've come from downhill and not... Maybe if you've if you've come straight into the sport in enduro, maybe blind racing is a style of riding as well. But yeah, equally, it just puts a bit of pressure on to constantly ride new stuff that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, true. True. No, I'm definitely with you. I'm definitely a by memory sort of yeah. thing. Over I time. love that, dude. It doesn't matter yeah. if the track changes. You normally hit your inside and something changes. You're always doing a certain amount on trail mm. aren't you yeah but, definitely yeah so good question though great question sam thank you um but, 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 at ned underscore field if you could make a dream bike what would it be well check my latest youtube and you'll you'll <laughs> <laughs> um honest honestly I've, i'm sport brat, brat personally so my dream bikes are taken care of by the sponsors that sponsor me so Brilliant. what about you davy uh dude i'm not like i don't really have one i'll be honest like i'm not really bike party i've never have been i'm not into the latest greatest this that and the other my dream bike is one that's running smooth that i enjoy jumping on and don't have to worry about and i have it it's right here at the side of me i I heard something a kid asked me the other day and i think it's a i think it's a something taken from a matt jones video he he said to me ollie what's your three bike garage and I was like, dude, Ooh. I don't understand what you mean, three bike garage. But if you have a garage with only three spots, quite simple, really. You have to pick three bikes to go in there. What is it? And actually, it is an interesting question. So for me personally, I have to have a dirt jump bike in. Yeah. I have to have a 150 trail bike in. The third is a real way up for me. What about you? 
Are we just talking mountain bikes, aren't we? We're not talking yeah, other yeah. two-wheeled objects. Okay, so yeah, 100% a dirt jump bike, and I need to add that to my repertoire this year. I'm going to dirt jump like a motherfucker in 2021, pump track, all that stuff. I need it back in my life. Then I'd definitely go um, trail bike, 150, 160, something like that. Something light and playful. Yep. And then now I'd go e-bike. I I'd know, go, dude. It's, yeah. re- it's really tough for me because it's between e-bike. Like, do you know what's downhill. sad? It doesn't even come into the question of downhill bike. I couldn't care less. I don't ride it enough. I don't care. No. And even even a 170, mine spends a lot of time hung up on the wall. Mm. I've got yeah. a little bit of a difficult situation because I ride road with my girlfriend. So ah, like, so yeah. Am I going to go e-bike for the boys or am I going to be... I think I'm going e-bike for the boys. I think you're going e-bike. Hopefully, for the boys. George doesn't listen to this. Yeah. I think I'm going e-bike for the lads. Yeah. Go e-bike. Yeah, e-bike for the lads for sure. Are you going e-bike for the lads? Yeah, dude. Yeah, my girlfriend didn't like him, so it didn't matter. So yeah, there you go. The third bike. It's yeah, an e-bike. e-bike. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Not bothered about specs or anything like that. Just nah. not even interested. Don't care. I'm not bothered about specs as long as it uses Exfusion suspension, DMR components, TRP brakes. Stands no tubes, wheels, and Goodyear tyres. I'm not fussed. As long as it's from that range, then yeah, I'm, I'm easy. Sponsor's dream. <sighs> uh, da, 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 da. At, no, mm, yeah, we'll do it. At Little Shredder 123, what is the worst bike park you have ever been to? Um, so, there was one, I'm really struggling, and it's quite, it's quite well known... Um, as a one of the first trail centres, it might be Kirofa Tree. Anyway, me and Rue went there, and it was literally it was like a it was like a it's like an Afan trail centre. Kirofa Tree. Kiro- I don't oh know. yeah, yeah, Kira Tree. I call it. Up I don't north, know what it is. Scotland. Yes, yeah, Scotland, and yeah. it's like quite legendary, and it's got this like rock ride, and this it's the one trail centre where I feel literally like the entire time I was pedalling uphill. With no reward for any of my work, right. so that would. But maybe I just got it on a bad day. But I was with Rue as well, and Rue's a real beast, and he said the same thing. So, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Is is a bike park a trail centre? And vice versa. Point. I don't know. It's a good point. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, because yeah, I'm just thinking the same. Okay, but I, I don't think I've been mm. to a worst one. If I'm honest, I've not ridden many bike parks or trail centres. Mm. I, I mean, if you say if you did say. Sherwood Pines in Nottingham is a trail centre or a bike park. Yeah. Then for me, that is the worst because it has nothing on it that I enjoy riding. There you go. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with saying it can be one man's trash is another man's treasure. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I went to one in Germany and there's loads of concrete rock gardens. And I just Ooh. think if you're going to manufacture a feature, let's not make it a rock garden. I get going down <laughs> rock gardens, but like, I mean, I'm sure I've done it in my time in the past, but. I'm not queuing up to ride rock gardens, dude. No. Really? No, but... no. I know what I haven't had. A flat tyre yet. Here, <laughs> have this. <laughs> Quickly. Um, yeah, quick. Um, Jordan, at Jordan Perry, would you rather fight Deeks every day for a month or fight Conor McGregor once? See, I think that I could... I think that I get... I've done a whole week of... I've done 10 days of Deeks every day. Have you? <laughs> yeah, so I, th- I think that I'll get progress through those 10 days and I'm just not up for the head the trauma that I get from a striker like Connor. Deeks is more of a, like a big ogre wrestler. So, yeah, mm. I'm, I'm picking Deeks. Plus, he's more fun to hang out with than Mr. Moneybags. Yeah, Deeks Fair. all day. Yeah, You? Fair. I mean, I'd probably go McGregor. Would you? I'd sell my own YouTube tickets and just... Set up a payday. I didn't think of that. Yeah, good point. <laughs> so really good day. point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I'd go that. It'd be yeah. a laugh, wouldn't it? There you go, yeah. Just take one punch. Just I'm a fat you. concussion coming your way and a yeah, big Just paycheck. take it like a champ. Um, at Sam Lasher, do you think The Rock will ever dig at Rampage? <laughs> I don't think The Rock will ever dig at Rampage. I don't think The Rock cares about Rampage. And I don't it's think funny, The Rock will how, see one message from me. How the amount of people that will have been tweeting at him or Instagramming it and he never Didn't say. even make a dent. 
Nothing <laughs> like, to even make a... No. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, all those people and that huge event and the whole thing around it, nothing. Social media for him is not the same as social media for you or I. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a totally different animal. <laughs> I'd yeah. love to see what happens if you just open up Instagram and it's just like, what is it doing? It's just like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Just smoking, yeah. Um, uh, I'm enjoying listening to questions. It's good fun. Yeah, I like a few listener questions, mate. Yeah. At Squids on Tour. Is it possible to dig, do trail work, pick up litter, etc., without taking a photo and posting? <laughs> Dude, he's so on point. He's so... MTB Batman does not miss a single thing. After I've posted it this morning, that's mm. how on it he is. Really? Yeah, but yeah, but Sven, you know, I covered, I covered the fact that I wasn't looking for a medal. We've already no. talked about it on this podcast. I do hear him loud and clear though, because there's a lot of that goes on. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, tough. ultimately, if you give to charity, even if you give to charity in order to get people to look at you giving to charity. Mm. You're still giving to charity. So even if you're trying to you're trying to get something off it, you know, get people to like, oh my God, you're so nice. I actually, talking of giving to charity, let's talk about it on my oh, yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking uh, did that giveaway, right? Yeah. And uh, wanted to raise money for a... Uh, a school oh, near me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I said I'd give the YouTube earnings yeah. to to them. The YouTube earnings were so lame. I I had to just... Oh. I, I had to double. Why well, what we're talking? It was a hundred quid I made off that giveaway video. So I, I gave them 200 quid anyway. So nice. I did... Yeah, I thought that was all right, wasn't it? I mean, ultimately, oh. it's just... A, and, and giving anything to charity is good anyway, so... Yeah. 100%, it's not a lot 100%. of money, I know. It's not the biggest thing, but I feel embarrassed to say it. But Every it's still, helps. yeah, exactly, yeah. Every little helps. So yeah, there we go. I'm literally, I'm, I'm doing exactly what Sven is saying, straight after him ridiculing me for doing it. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> Massive shout out to Sven. Yeah, the man. Amazing, amazing guy. What a guest. Um, what a guest. Uh, da da da. At Dan underscore Stewart, Whistler versus Morzine, which is better? Um, this is for you, say, I They're think. such different things, aren't they? Never been. I, never I feel been like Whist- Have you not? No, there you go. Well, I feel no. like just Whistler's like Disneyland for mountain biking, isn't it? So, And everyone speaks the language. And I feel a bit spoilt living so close to Morzine. So you get to go. I've got to go there way more times than I have Whistler. So, yeah. I would personally choose Whistler just because it means more of an exciting trip like and more cookies and burgers and stuff going to Canada, I guess. So, nice. Yeah, nice. France, I'm just spoilt. Cookies spoilt. and burgers, bro. Yeah. Just cookies and burgers. Yeah, I'm too spoilt for France. Been there too many times. So I'd still say Whistler still has the novelty. But yeah. still, to this day, my number one destination, where I'm picking, it's got to be Madeira. You like that spot, huh? I do. You've noticed, <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. You got to go. Honestly, we Madeira should go. ambassador, right there. Yeah, I man, am. I, mean. I am, and it's for a reason. Yeah, I mean, Which, you tell me when. Yeah, well, we'll let Boris tell us when. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll go. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Boris, tell us when. We'll, we'll go. We'll go do some stuff. Yeah. Um, Evan X Trader, top three countries that you have never been to that you want to ride in. Russia, China, and French Polynesia. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you go. <laughs> Decent. I like it. All right. Because ultimately, I've been lucky. There's so many fucking amazing places you can ride. And with amazing yeah. riding, you know what you're getting. You're getting amazing riding. For me, more than ever, as I get older, the trip is more about the trip these days. So, uh, yeah, I, I want to do some amazing riding wherever I go. But that's mm. almost a given. You, you're going to find something that's fun. So it's Definitely. more about fucking experiencing another world. And if you've never been to somewhere, if you like, to me, even Sahara this year, the last year, Morocco, that was like another world. I've never been to a proper Muslim country where they mm. have the Allah Akbar five in the morning and stuff like that. That's just fascinating to me. It's a completely different culture that I've never experienced. And there's still land that I haven't been to. like China. I've not experienced. I don't know what it's like. 
Russia. Yeah. I have no idea what it's like. Those are yeah. untouched parts of the world for me. Cool. So, yeah. What about you? Um, I have been to Russia, actually, but Wicked. I wouldn't go... Yeah, I wouldn't be... Uh, yeah, Fairly big place. In- yeah, but not interested. <laughs> okay, there you go. Done. Been there, done that. Okay. Um, I'd go... You know, I really want to go ride the stuff in Sweden, like Or. There's a place called Or Bike Park up, yeah, up north. I've spent right a lot there, of time yeah. in Sweden. Big Swedish ambassador. But I've never actually ridden there, so I'd do that. That's cool. They've uh, got an old World Cup track there that I, I rode with uh, Robin Walner. And it was probably the first oh, wow. proper World Cup racetrack. It's like an old school racetrack. It's rad. but it, that's that, sick. Like, was that up that way? Up, that was Aura, yeah. Or, it's in Aura, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you say aura or air, air. yeah I don't know. it's an a with a circle so i think yeah. that's an o so it's aura 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 like yeah, yeah that, um, that is so cool there yeah i'd really like to go and do that one for sure and then i think i'd go with uh i'd go canada i think i just want to you know even if it's yeah. not whistler just go experience parts of canada yeah i'm with maybe. you i've never been to other parts so i'd no. like to do that as well yeah i'd go do that and then hmm interesting uh, Madeira, Madeira was dude you gotta yeah I, I think I, that's gotta be up there hasn't it I think it is I, th- I think it's one of those destinations now I've just some mm. of the days that I've had on that island are unlike any other where my hands hurt my arms hurt just fucking days bombing dust yeah. everywhere you sit on the beach you go to Mac Tub which is like a nice. spot oh dude we got a, we got a, a lobster caught online from like a kilometre underwater. This thing was massive. It was like nothing I've ever eaten. Like <laughs> just everything about Madeira is sick for me. And poncha, you get pissed on fruit juice essentially. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got Mate, we I, should I mean, go. Let's do let's do a trip. When the yeah, when yeah. the let's do it. I'd like that. That'd be good. I'd like that too. I'd like that. Where's Ollie? Live. Please. Please. <laughs> um at Brad underscore Raven, which smells better, fresh cut grass or bread baked in the oven? I mean, oh, that's tough. Uh, I'm gonna go bread. I tell you what, weirdly, they're not. I'm yeah, they're not. Neither my my kind of smells either of them. You probably couldn't smell it anyway. I can't. You're really more smell of a garlic yeah, kind exactly, of guy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> grass is like just itchy for me. I'm not one to hang out in the grass. Not my not my scene, and then bread is just it's not a part of food that I really care about. I don't care about bread. I'm yeah. pretty naturally gluten free. I'm a pretty weird guy. I'd always pick a wrap over a loaf. Right. So yeah, yeah I don't care about either of those smells. Okay. Speaking of smells, where's Jono the uh, scorpion? Where is he at? Oh, I, I'm, I'm, he's going to be here <laughs> at the desk with me, but he's um, currently in the other room. So I need to put a shelf up. And then John will be here doing a podcast with me. But he's eating a load of locusts. He's chilling. Scorpions chill a lot. He's a desert hairy scorpion, in case you were wondering. Not that you really I was, care. Yeah, I was really but wondering. he's, uh, yeah, he's, and yes, he has a stinger. And yes, it is poisonous. And apparently it's quite painful. Um, he's quite quick. He's not that big with his tail stretched out. He's, yeah, yeah. You can't really see because this is an audio medium. But yeah. Yeah, so he's not can, that big, but, but he's, if you do want to watch on YouTube next week, he's probably going to make a special appearance. He maybe. will. I did an unboxing. Can... Yeah, I did an unboxing, unboxing. of John the Scorpion. Yeah, I thought, why not? Just fucking, I can't beat him. Join him. Unbox a scorpion. <laughs> you should just take take a sting just yeah. for YouTube. You'd be like, right, I'm going to sting I did by it, a scorpion. Yeah, I, I did it in my um, speedos, and then next week I'm going to um, crush my nuts in a mouse trap uh, on a YouTube live. And that's yeah. what life is now as a pro mountain biker. Yeah, yeah it's just clickbait. Yeah, we're doing mousetrap on, on the junk. That's it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, a few more. At Grizzly Scott 94 Grizzly When Scott. is this lockdown going to end? Need to get you and Odub on some Indian machine. Oh, Indian machinery. Okay, so this now makes sense. I'm sorry. So this guy actually... Like a Mahindra. ...has something to do with the Indian motorcycles. Oh. And invited us a while ago to go and ride... Indian oh, dude, please. I love that logo. I love that logo and yeah. that brand. Cool as fuck. So, yeah, yeah I remember that now. Fucking hell. Wow, seems like cool a while ago. So, yeah, so thanks, Grizzly Scott, as soon as we can. And I've got a motorcycle license because I don't have one. Um, have you got one? No, I need to get one. Actually, I, I, one. I, I, don't, I think that's on... I don't know if you can apply and do it now, but I was going to do like a full course. Cause I've got quite a few motorcycles, just no license. Yeah, so I really need to get on that. I've just wrote it down. 
motorcycle license. Yeah, I was, th- <laughs> was, was going to do that. it with Bernard. We were going to do like one of those intense courses because he needs to get yeah. his as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, moto license. That's a really good thing to actually get done if it's possible during lockdown, mm, isn't it? So it is. I should really, yeah. I should really try and do that. I've got a. Um, a have you ever seen my moto? Uh, I've got a Z650, no. a really old Z650. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's nice. quite cool. Yeah, it's really it's really ratty, but Where I need to get at my parents. Oh, Terrible. Okay. Just dump it around there. Never never yeah. dealt with it. It's got electric issues, so I've got a fucking mm. yeah. yeah, I fancy a motorbike. Okay, an I Indian. don't know what. Yeah, an Indian maybe. Yeah, I remember this guy now. Yeah, I do remember he does something with Indian. Rad. Cool company so, to be involved with for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um Okay. At Joseph Jones, when you shower, do you face the shower head or away from the shower head? Always face the shower head, I do. Do you? Yeah. Do you, well, so you face outward, so if someone came... Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I want the water in front of me. Really? Yeah. That's alien to me, man. That's that's weird. Yeah, yeah but you shit, that, you, you shit the other way around, don't you? You shit like a backstreet boy. When yeah, you go to the toilet, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you... the, the top of the toilet's perfect for phones, magazines. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're one of yeah. those. You're a back. Uncompromised boy. skid marks down the front of the toilet if you yeah. sit that way. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just sit in that way like Zach from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> <laughs> back streets, back. All right. So you you face water where the water out. comes out. Yeah. So I walk in the shower, turn mm. it on, and face the water. Yeah. So I get my junk. And I'll yeah. and do the, yeah yeah definitely face it yeah so you, right, you face away face away there you go but you don't Call me a, weird no I don't I don't think there's a right and a wrong but I'll just be worried about slipping and then the tap going in my ass the bath tap going in my ass or something you know yeah that'd be a shit but my our, our taps are on the opposite side so then it, I, I guess it I guess it does really come down to the configuration of the actual it does the layout area dude. yeah you're quite right the layout yeah. The layout. Some and where you're worrying about above. sort of metal objects going up your ass by accident yeah. in a slipping scenario. There you go. It, yes. Dude, it depends. The answer is it depends. It depends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, this is a good one, actually. At KDog91, what bike has Ollie learnt the most on? That's a great question. Dude. I think, yeah, hard to tell all day, every day. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I think for general bike skills, yeah. hardtail, isn't it? If I can remember, Jump in. if I can remember my quote from Death Grip right now, I would recite it because I actually, I when I watched that, I was like, "Fucking hell, that actually sounds quite quite a good sentence." It was like the simplest, the simplest bike teaches you most complicated things, or something like that. Ooh. But I do agree with that. The simplest bike does teach you the most. Yeah. And I quite often like get a BMX, questions. Dude. Like a BMX with no brakes. Yeah, exactly, you dude. You can learn a load on it. No yeah, brakes. yeah. But yeah, for me, a jump bike's taught me the most. And it, and and riding jumps has taught me how to corner. As stupid as that sound mm. sounds. Yeah, no, it does it makes sense. Um, that's a good one, actually. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Another another good one. At D underscore Lex. Uh, I'm new to mountain biking. Any tips to get comfy on new trails and any good ways to find them? Find them. I'd just ride around until you find one, to be, to be quite YouTube. honest with you. That's the best. No, not YouTube. No, David. <laughs> no, no. Around just watch YouTube and you'll find everything you need. Because to be honest, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> that's my... I, don't, I wouldn't say message pro riders relentlessly, mm. asking them where they're riding. Yeah, that wouldn't, that's, I wouldn't that's say that. One. But... Um, I think it's a really boring tip, but I think looking up makes life a lot easier and it's the biggest thing that you can teach anyone. And that includes that includes someone who rides all the time. And and yeah, like if I concentrate on looking up, I go quicker. Yeah, so, and I'm, it's a good tip. Really good tip. Mm. So there you go, DLX. You might be finding yourself looking at your front wheel, hovering over the brakes because things are coming up and taking you like by surprise. So just, just up your gaze another few degrees. And go with it. Eloquently put. Fantastic. There you go. Riding tips from someone not that good. Um, uh, da, 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 what we got? Um, at those MTB guys. Will Wes Ollie come back for another season after lockdown? Any trips planned? 
and what's the first bike park you're gonna ride once lockdown is over. People love bike parks, man. This is one thing I'm learning. This new, this, this like, I won't say new breed, that's not what I mean, but a lot of people who maybe have just found mountain biking within the last five years love bike parks. Love a bike park. Bike parks are great. Bike parks are great. I'll be riding Rogate bike park when when everything re- reopens. Go and see Sam over there. Um, yeah. I can't remember the other questions. Uh, will Wes Ali come back for another season? After I mean, if lockdown? you'll have me, mate. If you'll have me. Maybe. I mean, who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Um, yeah. Who I knows? Would have said so. Huh? I would have said so. I th- it seems like it. I think yeah. we just... I mean, for the record, the only reason we're doing Lockdown Companion is because we're in lockdown. If not, we'd be carrying on with Where's Ollie. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, hopefully we uh, come out of lockdown and we can carry on with Where's Ollie. Too and then right. we I don't think once a month. I've don't, so. don't, I don't think we've run out of uh, shit to talk about yet and things to get wrong. Nah, not yet. There's loads of stuff to go through. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, this is awful. Do you want it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. At SB Chris, your missus and your mum's minds are swapped into each other's body. Which one do you shag? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we do this. I don't... <laughs> I don't think we do. Okay, this. we'll move on from that. Good question. Uh, at Brad underscore Good Raven. Good question. <laughs> Keep them coming. At Brad underscore Raven. If you are arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you have done? Well, that's quite an interesting thought. Um, I think they'd just automatically know it would be some sort of administra- administrative error. Like you mean like an a unpaid tax, tax bill or like a not paid speeding fine or something like that. I don't think... Yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to think that I've got my moral compass set enough that they'll know that I haven't suddenly gone out on a GBH spree. Yeah. You? Okay. I mean, I'm going to go on a limb and say that they probably probably think that I've maybe like just done some little little like funny scam that's maybe gone a little bit wrong yeah yeah that's, you know i like a little you know sort of like you know not a break and enter i don't mean that but like a i like a little like importing stuff yeah 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 and for the record actually just at the start of this my dad called in and was gonna just give me money that he wasn't just gonna give me money like that i just want to no, make that was. clear because I, I guess that came across as a bit bratty he wasn't just gonna bring me yeah money. he was my dad and i sell cars so we've obviously sold the car today so he's bringing me the money nice. so it's not yeah tell you what was funny silver right, spoon once, right? in through the door <laughs> silver spoon so so my dad right okay um probably so my dad is a car mechanic used car dealer he's a bit of a jack the lad he used to be a bit of a jack the lad not so much anymore he's, he's the nicest guy you'll ever meet and when i was at school i was about 15 and he somehow came across all of these pen knives that had been confiscated from an airport. This was the story he told me. So in my dad's flat, there was hundreds of pen knives, these Swiss army knives. <laughs> and uh, I I took one to school one day and then um, my teacher was really into like outdoors and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, what do you think to these? And he was frothing, dude. He absolutely loved these really pen wicked, knives. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're all the same. So they much were so just like... that he started buying them, a lot of them. <laughs> like, so I was going to school with like fifty semi-illegal pen knives and just no been like, "Here you go." He was just giving me a tenner for each one. <laughs> no <laughs> way. So good. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, Mister Griffiths, for keeping the dream alive when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> he bought me a bike for sure. He definitely bought me some bike parts. Mister Griffiths later went on to uh, go to jail for ex- making an explosive <laughs> with none of the knives in. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, so should we just do a couple more? Sure, dude. I'm chilling. Yeah, at Ben Postlethwaite MTB. What protective gear do you guys run on an average ride? Knee pads, gloves, question mark. Okay. I personally run... Uh, I always run a left ankle brace, and most of the time, two ankle braces. I run gloves. Always run gloves, other than on my dirt jump bike, where I run, like, mushroom grips, so I just have no gloves. Yeah. Knee pads and a helmet. What about you? 
uh, always mm, always a helmet. Very fan, very much a fan of the helmet. Um, always mm, that's it really. To be honest, I mean, I have knee pad days. It's like, is it a knee pad day or not? Like, are we gonna go? Are we riding a little bit harder than normal, or are we not? Um, gloves, yeah, I ride gloves. I do ride gloves actually. Thinking about it, I don't. If it's warm, I don't bother. But yeah, especially death grips are actually really grippy when you hands get sweaty. I found. Um, but yeah. That's it, really. I don't have any other. I didn't you know, used to I'm be not a, a neck brace guy. <laughs> yeah, neck brace, half brace guy. <laughs> Put the Liat on. I didn't um, <clears throat> used to be into knee pads too much. Weirdly, I still don't wear knee pads when I ride dirt jumps. How weird is that? Literally, I'll go mm. for a cross country ride with knee pads on, get home, take them off, and then go to the dirt jumps and try to seven twenty. Yeah, don't fit on oh, the jeans. So though. weird, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but um. I never used to be into them, but now they're so light, like the TLD stage pads are so like lightweight knee pads yeah. that it's like, I might as well just have them on the whole time. So I do. Yeah. I think like you say, they have got better. I remember like the first, like the 661 ones when they first came out, yeah. the D3O, which were like that big. They were huge. Uh, never, never used to, unless yeah. I was racing four cross um, yeah, yeah. war there is. And now, like you say, I've got the, I can't remember which ones I've got, some ion ones really light and it's just like, yeah. you don't even know you've got them on. No, so. exactly. Yeah. Almost nice as leg warmers, aren't they? Especially now. And it'd be shit to break a kneecap. Oh, fuck That'd be that. shit, wouldn't it? I've I've got a really weird left one. And it's, right. it's so horrible to feel it. It's the... What's it called, your kneecap? Oh, no, we don't We don't question oh, things just that kneecap. involve thought. Just, kneecap. Yeah, yeah, just shut up, Ollie, yeah. In fact, let's Call move on. Call the kneecap. On. Let's move on. Okay. Um, do, do, do. This is Patella, by the way. Uh, same guy, Ben Postlethwaite. Is putting logs in jumps bad? Some say it makes the jumps go soft. Others say it's fine. Yeah, I think you can put whatever you've put fridges in there. I think people <laughs> like to make out like it's a fucking some sort of mega science. But ultimately, I think if you can do it out of dirt completely, then do it. But then, you know, some jumps aren't about them being perfect. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of log sticking through. Like on a on a track, I would say cover up logs and stuff. On a dirt yeah. jump, I tend not to... I tend to try and make it out of pure ones because you get the logs <coughs> rotting and yeah, it shrinks and stuff. But bit of squish. Yeah. I think I think it's nice the thought that is unless you're making trails like Jimmy Pratt's trails. I don't think it matters. Mm. Like those things are fucking perfect. Really, and they, it. yeah, and they're so perfect that you have to cover them up. You have to wet them every time you use them. You know, like yeah. it isn't. It is. There's very there's it might not be that important to you to have a really perfect takeoff. In which case, use what you can. Get that <laughs> fridge, stick it in there. Get a mattress that's stuck next to the track, put it in there. But I would, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the answer is to be honest. No. Um, at Leo Coyle Smith, our Tinder friend, um, Carhartt or Dickies? Nice. Um, I uh, Troy Lee Designs. Catch you in a bit. <laughs> oh man I'm going to go Dickies anyway because I, I just Dickies shorts back in the day were rad nice nice the worker short um, very similar brands eh actual workwear yeah. that's turned into some sort of moustache wearing hipster <laughs> shit oh man um, what else we got uh, Jin Sandhu 6 who is your biggest inspiration Michael Jordan, first and foremost. That was very. That, see, that came quick off the tongue, didn't it? Yeah, man. Um, my mother, Claire. Um, nice. Got those. Uh, what else? I would say, Steez wise, I was, was never. I, a PT obviously was like a really big inspiration, but he wasn't. Because I was riding a lot of dirt jumps when I was a kid. It was like more like Mike Aitken, Christopher. Um, yeah, a lot of BMX. Style right. wise, um, and then obviously people like Kevin Windham. Do you know, always Ooh. been obsessed with people's riding style and playing style because one of the things that never gets mentioned about Michael Jordan is his style. And if right. you can be into, if you're into basketball, you will have heard of LeBron James. LeBron James has fucking nasty style. He can like be, bad. yeah, really bad, and he can be the winningest player in the world, but he will never touch MJ because. It, he's got a horrible style of game and it can score a lot of points. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the style. I'm talking about yeah. a Mike Aitken three table. 
and style has lost its meaning over the years massively. Some of the shit that people talk about being steez, like when you when you talk about a, a, a front flip with a tail whip, there's to me, I'm an old guy now, I guess, but that's not steez. You don't. You just want to see high tweak. Dude, Smooth there's just London. certain things that, that like, there's, people have style or people don't have style. Unfortunately, and that's just the way it is. You yeah. watch Ryan Howard ride and he can be hitting a turn. You know that guy's got style. If, when you see our dog ride, he's got killer style. When you see Ethan now do a three, he's got yeah. killer style, you know? Fuck yeah. But we, I, I'm, not, I'm not down Derriman. with, yeah, exactly. Derriman. I'm not down with like people just saying everything is steez. It's, it's Dude, speaking now. of style, style too, did you see Barsha, even though he was in third place at the weekend, just on it? He looks sick. He was like old school Barsha again. There see, was that's... that. Have you watched the races yet? Yeah. So there was like um, where the mechanics area was, there was like a little hump thing there. Yeah, and yeah, a lot yeah. of people were just sort of coasting over it. And then there was one lap, it might have been like lap four in the main event, where he just sent it off it. And I was like, but he was like, sideways oh so and then he was like wheeling into the triple thing oh man he just looked insane see I, I, that's so sick because that's like he's so stylish at his most you know like when someone's going Flat absolutely out. Yeah. all out and they're steezy like yeah. quite often you'll see people when people are going efficient and fast like on a race day there's an element of like winding it in a bit and like there's almost efficiency in, in certain riders that's why yeah. I'd say like you know, I don't think I think a lot of racers don't have bad style. Well, no, some, they have the sickest style, but quite a lot of racers you wouldn't look at and be like, "Oh, he's so stylish," because they're reining it in, they're making it efficient. Like, mm. you know, you watch G Ride, for instance. It's not I don't instantly just think I, th- I think G's sick as fuck, but I don't think, "Wow, he, that's so steezy." Yeah, he's just like it's funny though. Some he's... some downhill guys do have that. Like Blank is probably one of those. That you're so, like, yeah, you watch his run and you're like, right, he's scrubbing stuff. It just so looks so sick. Yeah. F- fun that's the, you know, yeah like brook fun. brooks the yeah. shit brooks so fu- brooks got such like a strong style on the bike i really like there's different mm. types of style yeah. yeah yeah he gave me goosebumps watching barsha like that dude i get oh, hyped fuck, you know so when you see someone go so that sick. fast yeah, yeah, and yeah that stylist just screw i was like ah! on the I was edge just off in the kitchen watching i'm like oh my god <laughs> on the edge yeah so rad that's sick um, i can't remember what the question was anyway um yeah i don't know we probably covered it yeah Oh, biggest inspiration, that's what it was. Oh, there you go. See, I rattled on and we completely lost. Cool. Yeah. So I've named a few inspirations there, I guess. That was good. I like that one. Um, da, 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 da. Also, as well, you, do you know what? It's unfair to not mention all of the people that are around you that you ride growing up with. So inspiration, inspiration has different layers as well, doesn't it? So like, you've got these like aspirational heroes like Mike Aitken or like Christopher or like PT for his race runs or you know yeah. even warner yeah. to warner was an inspiration to you know not not necessarily through his riding because you didn't see as much of that it was all like stills in magazines but just as a person you know mm. as a kid growing up you wanted to be like those guys but um also the people around you i think like the bigger guy the bigger boys the a lot of my friends i see even to even to this day when you see someone go out of their ride out of their skin or like even yeah. following someone who might be slower than me, but they're riding on the edge. That's fucking, that's mm. the shit. That is exactly the shit. Yeah, that is 100% totally. it. I can be going with, you know, like like my buddy Seb, he's a BMXer. He's got zero front brake control. He's got an e-bike now and he's, <laughs> and he's nailing downhill runs. I can follow behind him and see that he's like on the edge and it's the sickest shit. It's the same as like watching someone on a race run. Exactly what you're saying about Barsha. I'm not saying yeah. Seb gives me goosebumps because, <laughs> but it's close. <laughs> but it's the same thing. My friends inspire me day in day out on bikes. Mm. You know, when you see someone spin something, they don't want to spin it, and they fucking sack up and they do it. There's nothing yeah. like that to just be like, right, you, yeah, that's the, that. So yeah, that, that's cool. The friends are a big inspiration. Some of my friends jump their houses. Sometimes <laughs> it doesn't go to plan, but that's an ins- he's an inspiration for trying. And yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I like that. Uh, should we do? Let's do two more. Let's do two uh, more. Let's do this one because it's similar, similar to what we talked about. You so didn't talk this about your inspiration, in... but oh, uh, my dad, hands down, my dad's my biggest inspiration. 
just because he's the sickest dude. And he just brings money. So it's like amazing. <laughs> I'm just sat at home and he's just like, I'll bring you some money. I'm like, thank oh, you, cool, daddy. Man. Yeah, thanks, dad. Just drop it off. It's cool, man. Or just leave it. Don't... Yeah, anyway, um, so there's that. And then Travis Pastrana was a massive inspiration of mine growing up. Just everything on and off yeah. the bike. Just a huge inspiration. Um, anyway, yeah, I think just those two at the moment. Right, McGrath, you know, can carry on. Yeah, 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 so many yeah, people, totally, you know, yeah. even down to Ban Margera, I guess. Is, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, this one at Focus Bikes, favorite Ooh. BMX rider. Oh well, we weirdly kind of covered yeah. it to be honest. I've got to say, no one did it like Mike Aitken for me when I was younger, growing up, and I. Yeah, we watched like Anthem, Rhythm. All I don't know if you know all those trail videos, but they were ones that really got me hyped to ride obviously we mm. watched all of like the contest riders nasty and yeah and all all of the mountain bike dudes in there as well super steezy ma- mountain bike dudes see i'm sort of mm. i'm sort of mixing questions here aren't i yeah but favorite so, I mean, bmx me, i would say is, th- is it mine would be chase hawk i think that one yeah. stands out just again because i rem- that at that point in my life when i was watching him he was quite young yeah riding dirt jumps a lot watching him go super high on everything yeah was just he was really yeah, different cool. yeah he was really different but yeah yeah fair enough and uh, wear a helmet wear a helmet Chase. and i mean like jimmy's not a bmx he's a mountain biker but jimmy pratt um hmm. is one of the he, yeah he's not a bmxer so this is bollocks but i kind of think of him as a he's so just trails that he's not yeah rattling down rooty downhill tracks but his style's f- second to none hmm like to get him on the podcast to be honest actually jimmy's um Dude, jimmy's out it. of action he's been out of action for a long time with a back injury um great lockdown guest yeah great lockdown guest but he's you know he's having he's had a shit time for a long time and he's still one of, he's like a yeah a proper uh uk dirt jump legend and let's do it and an let's inspiration no doubt so we should do it yeah i'll let's speak to him see if, see if he's up two, for that's it. two we've got in the can then hands him and the other one and the other one we can't talk about. Um, okay, last one I reckon. Then we wrap up because we're pretty close. Okay. Um, I'm close. If you if you could put oh, at Tom Obh, if you could put a team of five riders from all over the globe to ride your hypothetical bike brand, who are you choosing? Oh, it's a good one, isn't it? Let's hear yours it's a first. Banger. Oh, why do I have to go first? Fucking. Because I always go first. I feel like I'm hogging. All it. right. So we're gonna go five riders. Hypothetical bike brand. We're going to go, I mean, he, obviously you could just name the five biggest riders in the world and it'd be like, yeah, cool. But I, I'm I'm going to try not to. So I'm going to go Ethan Nell for that Steve hey, all-round. Sh- hey, should me and you come up with them simultaneously? That's yeah. good. Okay. That's good. So Ethan Nell, so you want, so he's your free ride guy, Steve's yeah. guy. Yeah, nice. I'm going to go Cade Edwards because he is hands down the most exciting and uh, multi-talented rider that I've seen in a long time. He just gets me hyped and he doesn't give a fuck as well, which I'm a big fan of. So yeah, Cade would be my pick. Like that. Okay. Uh, then should we have like a downhill guy on our hypothetical yeah, bike let's brand? do it. Because what is Cade? He's a free racer of the next generation, isn't he? Yep. Potential uh, rampage so... guy, couldn't he? Yeah, you can imagine it. So I'm going to go, we're going to go all out racer. So I'd go Brooke. Brooke, Brooke nice. Yeah. Nice. Fuck, who am I going to go with? Bear in mind, I just can't pick my friends because I'd love that. if if it, if it really happened, it would literally just be a list of my friends. Let's be honest, yeah. because <laughs> we're gonna go on fun video trips and stuff. So. <laughs> um, okay, not that the other people I'm picking aren't my friends, but you know what I mean. No, yeah, I know nearest and dearest. Um, sponsored by Lannister. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay, so let's go. Um, with a free rider, let's say maybe a slope style free rider I'm trying to think of someone super exciting no you need a downhill guy oh do I need a downhill guy yeah we're up to three already aren't we you've only done one no but we're doing five between us yeah we're up to five yeah yeah so we've got we've we've just got oh five between us yeah that's oh, what sorry. I was thinking okay. just to speed things along a bit you know what I mean yeah <laughs> um god it's hard dude it is hard because I don't want to just pick like a Man, do you know who I'd really like? 
for the old school, and I'd like to see it just to make a change because, man, am I bored of the same sponsors for this dude. But Greg Minar, the greatest of all time, <laughs> having him on board, how cool would that be? And him and cool. Brooke are good mates. Yeah. And just if we could get another World Cup win in the next season with Big Air Minar, that would be That's sick. That's good. That's good. So then we're rounding it out with number five. It's got to be a slope style guy, dude. It's got to be a slope style guy. Yeah. So. And he's your pick. I mean, hmm. Would you go Regatkin? Would you? Regatkin? Yeah. Big Regatkin so. fan, so let's go Regatkin. I'd go Regatkin. That's a good That's nice. a good bike brand. That's a good, we've got a good all-rounder, all-round team. Yeah. And nice. then we'd have like a couple of brand ambassadors and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's a good question, that. I like that one. Yeah, I enjoyed that, yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, let's just do a little shout out for a small business and... That'll be us, I think, mate. Off to the races. Who's the small business this week? So, small business this week is... And they don't know this is coming, so... At Underdogs Cult. You know these guys? No, please explain So, I got a message from a chap called Matt. And this sounds like just a cool thing that they're doing. So, um, so he said in his message, uh, reaching out uh, to try and be involved with a featured small business. At Underdogs Cult, we are about the community... They sell merch and use proceeds to go into putting on jam sessions at local trails and engaging the youth, in, engaging the youth and celebrating our rad sport. But with COVID, they've not been able to put on any jams, so they decri- decided to create the U-rated series, which showcases underrated riders across Wales and soon across the UK, while trying to keep people smiling and laughing by shitposting on our Instagram. Um, but yeah, I had a quick look on before. So at uh, sorry, Underdogs Cult. Uh, if you go on their website, it's www.underdogscult.com they sell merch got some t-shirts got beanies hats hoods uh, lanyards and stuff like that uh, and I guess if you buy a t-shirt it's going to go into supporting kids and putting on cool, cool. jam sessions so that's underdogscult.co.uk underdogscult.co.uk yeah some of the t-shirts are really nice actually like sick nice a few, few nice designs on there man rad so there you go excellent right. I think that's us isn't it are we wrapped up? I think we can be. Well, it's been Wrap fantastic. It I always enjoy this. Every week I enjoy this and I enjoy all of the interaction I get from everyone who listens. So thank yeah, you man. for keeping me uh, active once again. Yep. No, pl- no my, my pleasure, dude. But yeah, just to wrap up, if you want to be involved in that Focus film, for sure, I'd love to see some listeners involved in that. So there's a link in the show description to submit some of your worst and best videos and photos. Why not? It's gonna. You ain't doing nothing else other than listening to this podcast. You ain't so doing nothing. Sift through some old footage, upload it, and you might even be in a cut media advert, which would be sick. Nice. You don't want to be in a cut media film. Uh, and that's it. And that's that. Thank you for listening. One thing before we wrap up, this is the last thing I want to leave people with. Loads of people always reach out and ask how they can sort of like help and promote the podcast. The best thing to do is share this episode, and if you can, leave a review on iTunes or a YouTube comment, or subscribe there. Just tell your friends. Like, I always like this thing to be organic. I'm not pushing it too hard. But yeah, just a share on your social media makes a huge difference. So please do that. Do it now. Fuck's sake, just do it now. Fuck's sake, why haven't you already done it, dude? Take a screenshot, do it now. Do it now! And on that note... Peace. Done. Ay, ay, ay. You are part national lockdown. 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 Lockdown.